Our last topic in chapter 18 concerns what's called the law of cost and net realizable value. So let's have a look at an example to demonstrate what we're talking about here. Let's say in 2006, a retailer bought 10,000 iPods thinking that they're the most popular product in the world. I'm going to be able to sell them easily for the next 10 years and they're going to cost me $250 each and I'll sell them for $500. Okay, what happened was the business didn't realize that the iPhone was going to be released in 2007 and basically that's left the iPod obsolete. No one buys iPods anymore. Everyone, you can play your music on your phone. So if I'm stuck with all these iPods, let's say I've got a thousand dollars left, well to sell them, I might need to sell uh, or lower the price to 150 bucks. And my problem is, well when they were very popular, I was buying them for 250 well now I can't get rid of them. I'm going to lower the price to 150 and businesses do this all the time. Why would you sell something for less than it costs? Well, it happens. It's better off getting $150 than nothing. So maybe I sell it for less than it's worth. So I guess what we want to ask ourselves is which value should I use today to value these iPods? The 2006 cost of 250 or the current selling price of 150 Well, different theories say different things. Historical cost, reliability, well they probably say, why don't we use this one here. That's, we've got proof of that one, that's the original price, so we'll keep it at that. But maybe relevance would say this one, this one's more relevant to decision making. Uh, conservatism, always use the one that's going to impact the business in a negative sense, the lowest, so we'll pick that one. Well, let's see if we can sort of structure this and have a formula. So depending on which theory, um, it'll depend. So let's have a look at some other examples. So in the real world, you've got hotel rooms. So you can see a hotel room here is $199 normally. Um, that's at the Windsor Hotel in Melbourne. But if you jump on last minute, uh, .com.au right now, you can get that room for $149, but it has to be tonight. So their whole business is based on selling you a room at the last minute for a price that's less than its cost. So why would the hotel do that? Why would they sell something that's normally $199 for $149? Well, they're better off getting $149 than nothing and having an empty room. Another example would be David Jones, their swimwear sales in always in June, July, August, in the middle of winter. They're better off getting rid of it for a very low price than actually having to uh, keep it and not sell it. So why would we sell something for less than its cost? Well, some reasons could be it's been superseded by a newer model, e.g. an iPod has been superseded or replaced by a newer product that does a better job. Or it could be the iPhone 5. I have the iPhone 5 and now I've, the iPhone 6 has come out. Well, I can't sell the iPhone 5 for as much money. Maybe it's become obsolete, so it's not used anymore, like a typewriter or CDs. Maybe it's out of season, like selling umbrellas during summer or swimwear during winter. It's out of fashion, it's the wrong colour or brand. Could be damaged or spoiled, like bread, fruit, vegetables, maybe some electronic products or white goods that got a crack in them. Or maybe we're just trying to sell it deliberately below cost. Some businesses do that, and we'd be better off getting something for it than nothing. So we deliberately discount it to get some... Uh, to, so just so we can sell it basically. So how should we value inventory then? Should we pick the amount we paid, the cost, or today's value? Well, the rule we're going to do is pick which one is the lowest. Inventory will always be valued at whichever is lower out of the cost, or, and the cost by that we mean the product cost, or what's called the net realizable value. So let's look at that. What does net realizable value mean? So just going back a slide, we learned this one earlier in this chapter. We know what product cost is. We're okay with that. But what does net realizable value mean? Well, what that means is it's the estimated selling price of stock less any selling, marketing, or distribution costs. So Let's have an example. Let's say it's the start of December. I've got 100 coats in stock. I'm going to have a hard time selling them because it's the start of summer. Each of these costs, uh, sorry, coats had a product cost of $50 each. So that's what they cost me. Now, I'm going to have to lower the selling price to $40 in order to sell them because it's the uh, middle of summer. And to do so, I'm going to have to take out an ad for $200 saying, come buy these coats that are on sale, and that covers 100 coats. So how much should I value these coats at? Should I stick with 50? Is it 52, 42, 38, 40, so on? Well, 
The rule we apply is inventory is always valued at the lowest of cost or net realizable value. So what do we mean by that? Well, cost was product cost. So cost in this case was 50 bucks. That's how much the, co the, uh, the coats cost originally. Net realizable value, what well, the definition was, the estimated selling price less any selling, marketing and distribution costs. So we think we can only sell them for 40, but to do so, I'm gonna to have to take out a $200 ad that's going to cover 100 coats. That's $2 per coat. So the net realizable value is $38. So how do I value these coats? Well, the rule says pick whichever is lower. So which is lower out of 50, which was the cost, or net realizable value, which was $38? Well, the lowest one's net realizable value. So that's the amount I'm going to pick. I'll have to write these down from $50 to $38. I'm not going to be able to sell them for a profit. I'm going to make a loss on each one. But the point is, at least I'm going to be able to sell them, even if it's for less than its cost. This is called a stock write down of $12 per unit. That's actually going to be called an expense. And what we'll do is write that in and it needs to go in our income statement. Where would it go? It's actually going to go in here. It's going to go in where we put in stock losses and stock gains. So if we ever have a stock write down, we're going to put it in there.